Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing a review for the UEFA Champions League Road to the Finals. Uh, new cards, because it did release new cards. We're going to go ahead and see which cards they did end up releasing. They did do Europa League cards too, so if you guys are interested in me uh, reviewing these cards too, which, oh my god, Kondogbia, uh, <laughs> we'll definitely be able to do that too if you guys are definitely interested in that kind of stuff. So we're going to go ahead and review the the uh, Champions League cards first in terms of comparisons and what their price is probably going to be. And then we're just going to take it from there. So we're going to start off with Suarez here. So Suarez base card stats is 83 pace, 92 shooting, 83 passing, 89 dribbling, and 87 physical. So right off the bat, it's a pretty decent start for someone like Luis Suarez, right? Probably means that his finishing is super, super consistent. Uh, in terms of specific stats that we got going on here, he has 89 acceleration uh, and 77 sprint speed. So it's good. Uh, that he actually has the uh, the sprint the acceleration over the sprint speed because that is more important in this game than it has been in any other game. He has 96 finishing, 86 composure, right? When I see these cards, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to search it up on FootWiz only because, shoo, excuse me, only because um, I can actually see like the dark mode actually helps my eyes out a lot more because my eyes burn, right? Um, 96 finishing, 86 composure is awesome. He has the four star weak foot, but doesn't have the three star skills, which does suck, but I'm sure his finishing is super, super consistent, right? Uh, traits, outside foot shots, technical dribbler, CPU only. So he has outside foot shot. Not, I mean, it is pretty helpful, actually. If you do a finesse shot, then he's probably going to do that. Like, you know, that finesse outside the foot shot, maybe he does that really well. Uh, could definitely be a thing with him, right? Because obviously you want to shoot more with your strong foot than you would with your weak foot, right? He has good shooting stats in general. Great passing stats for someone who's going to be a striker, honestly, with somebody else. Or if it's like a 4-3-3 uh, with the midfielders close to him and the wingers close to him. Or I think he could work out as a lone striker. Yeah, his his long passing isn't great. It's 67, which really sucks, but I think the short passing would be more important than the long passing for the striker personally. So I think that him having the short passing is really, really awesome. Um, he obviously has good stamina as well, 92, so you can, you can use him as a cam if you really want to, but obviously, again, his long passing isn't going to be great. Uh, but 92 stamina is fantastic for a striker. 84 strength, 89 aggression is really, really good because he's six foot tall with a good physical presence in game and physical stature. His physical stature is pretty chunky, right? So it makes a huge difference. And then he has 83 agility and 84 bounce. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's a huge difference. Oh, it's not a huge difference. Oh, yeah, they didn't really touch this card too much. It's like ones and twos. Damn, so a plus two rating and it's only like plus ones for most stats. The passing is increased. Yeah. I mean, the card will feel better, but not like significantly better. So in comparison to his regular, probably not worth getting. 1.8 mil is kind of steep for him in comparison to 220k. Definitely not worth another 1.6 mil, but it's always the color of the cards that get to people, right? People just like the way that the cards look um, in that regard. No defending stats, doesn't matter because he's a striker, but uh, yeah, Suarez is probably a really sick striker in this game. I don't like that he doesn't have the skill moves, but at least he has good dribbling, good shooting, good pace for being a striker, because um, it's better to have the acceleration with good physical presence and good height than anything else. 70 jumping with 80, uh, 82 heading accuracy. Uh, it's really up to you if you want to give him uh, a finisher, right? Which will increase his jumping by 10 and his finishing stats in general to the 99s and just keep his pace as it is. Or you can give him a hunter card to increase his pace and increase his acceleration, but as well as give him finishing stats in every other area. Long shots being 86, but having a shot power at 97 or quote-unquote 97. I think this card with a Hunter would be fantastic because, again, dribbling is already good. 86 composure is already very nice. And the passing stats is, is a characteristic of his. So that looks like a really cool card, but not necessarily one that um, I would recommend getting. The next card that we have here is going to be Cavani. So Cavani. The reason why I'm switching between both websites is because I don't know if Footpin has it on their main website. Uh, so Cavani is a type of striker that I don't like uh, because of his characteristics. He's a physical type striker. So like the Harry Kanes, the Lewandowskis, the Cavani's. Not really into these guys, but are they effective in FIFA nowadays? Absolutely. They're very good. If you use them in the right way, they can be awesome, right? He's six foot one, 
with uh, oh, it doesn't have the four star weak foot though. That's a huge, huge letdown for his card. Really, really big letdown. Because I think I think the sole purpose of this card is to win headers in the air and maybe get an angle to to hit like a really powerful strike, but wouldn't be ideal for me. He's also 435k, which is really, really not worth it for the stuff that he offers because he's a sluggish card with 79 agility, 61 balance while being six foot one and 78 acceleration. So very sluggish on the ball. Um, opening up the space for his right foot is going to be tough at times. Not going to be necessarily ideal. Left foot, he can shoot his left foot. I mean, dude, dude I've seen Zaha hit time for Nestrots with his left foot. So it's definitely possible, but it's not ideal. You know what I mean? Uh, physical stature in game is, is good. So his physical stats that he has for his physicality right here, also very good. Again, 90 jumping, 92 heading accuracy while being six foot one. Gonna be, it's going to be tough to defend against this guy. That's why people like this is when you want to have fullbacks that can actually win the ball in the air so that when they cross it far post, they can actually deal with it. Because some people like use the short players and it's just not an ideal situation, right? Because Crossing is effective. It's pretty. It's really random, but it's still an effective way um, to score in this game, right? Next card we have here is Pulisic. So Pulisic, I think they may have upgraded him a little bit. Let's see here. Okay, so Pulisic is upgraded a lot, which is awesome. So now he has... Well, he still has 70 composure and 76 finishing, so... Again, if there was a regular game mode in the game that wasn't competitive oriented, I would love to use this card. Uh, but because because he is four star, four star, and that's like the bare minimum requirement for players to really be fun in the attacking area with medium, medium defensive. So when someone has medium, medium defense, you always got to look at their, their stats, right? Because you'll notice that their card will really, really revolve around dribbling, right? Because look, he has, eight, he has 96 acceleration, 92 sprint speed, 91 agility, 94 balance. So all of that together will make him dribble really nicely on the ball, considering that he is also 5'10". Physical stats aren't really there, so that's something that you'll be missing for sure. 80 stamina is decent, not amazing. Uh, 91 jumping, cool, uh, but no heading accuracy, but he can win the ball in the air, which is really, really awesome. Uh, four star, four star, really cool. 5'10 height, really good height. Um, but the composure being low and the finishing being low can definitely be a problem. Um, at least he has shot power, so it's not like his finishing would be terrible. But it's not necessarily ideal. At least they did give him a significant upgrade. But if they upgrade the card in the future, it would be nice if they were to upgrade the finishing and the composure significantly um, to make the card more usable. If you keep the volleys, the long shots, and so on and so forth the same, that would be okay. But just to make the card more usable, increasing the composure and the finishing would definitely be really nice. Uh, next card we have here is Serge Aurier. I think Serge Aurier, Aurier got a really good upgrade, if I'm not mistaken, because I think... He, has, he may have an inform, actually. No, he has one Champions League card. So in comparison to his 81, right, you will be comparing these types of stats, right? So negative fives in the acceleration and sprint speed. So that's by itself is a great uh, increase. 156K, so take that into account before anything, right? Um, he has uh, an agility and balance boost, which is amazing, right? 77 agility, 80 balance is great for a fullback. That's also five foot nine. He has 99 jumping, 99 he has the aggression the strength the stamina for that this makes him a fantastic fullback acceleration and sprint speed pretty decent um for a fullback as well because he is high high work rates and if you use this card i would highly recommend you slapping a shadow on him because his jumping is already 99 and his strength is already pretty decent um yeah increasing the pace as much as possible would definitely be very ideal uh agility and balance is good so com you know moving left and right with him will be awesome 79 composure is a very good bare minimum for uh, a fullback as well because he also has 82 short passing and 75 long passing 72 curve so that's really nice to have on the sides when you want to make runs um with your left mids your right mids your left wings your right wings so on and so forth uh to open up the space for yourself so again really really good card this card for 156k i would say is kind of worth it because of the meta of fullbacks this is a really good card so that's a really good upgrade on ea's parts for sure Definitely give credit to them for that one. Uh, next card we have here is Douglas Costa. So Douglas Costa's biggest problem without even looking at the card is 100% his finishing. Um, because this card would ideally be one of the best cards in the game. I think if I think because I think because he has really good stats in literally every single area except for physical, which is fine because that's his characteristic. 
I think that EA should make his finishing at least 77 because he does have 84 composure. That's not the right card. He does have 85 composure. So if he has 77 finishing, right, it would be really nice. But with the finishing, here's the thing about this card, right? Here's what you could do. You could just give him a finisher, uh, which would be this. Because if you give him a finisher, you would increase his physical stats as well, right? Really, really up to you. I wouldn't necessarily do that. With this card, I know a lot of people would be like, why don't you just put Deadeye on him? I really think that increasing the passing stats is such an irrelevant thing to do. Personally, that's this is how I see it, right? I think it's a very, very irrelevant thing to do because I feel like that's not the most important stats. The most important stats in FIFA is the shooting and the dribbling. Those two are the biggest ones, hands down. You can use someone like Arnautovic in your team, but if you have dribbling and shooting, that's what's important. So I feel like if you do end up using the card, I'd probably slap a sniper on him because his shot power is already really good at 91, but you do want to increase that finishing as much as possible, as well as his composure and general dribbling stats. So this guy's just zooming in and out of the pitch. Uh, in terms of price, he's 410k. If you believe that the chemistry style upgrades his finishing by that much all the way to an 86, definitely get the card. If you don't, the finishing might be a really huge problem for you. Um, I think in-game, the way that I would set it up is obviously I'd have him on the left side, make whatever hybrid or team I want with him, and then in-game, I would switch him to the right side because finesse shots are really effective. If they ever nerf finesse shots and make 1v1s more effective, keep him on the left side because he is left-footed and driven shots if good again you know could be a really good thing for 1v1s right so but again another fantastic card um i think in terms of general upgrades from his regular card i don't think there's anything like too significant uh there is actually something significant so this is good his passing is up by threes and twos and then his his shooting stats is ups is ups in the fives and fours and his composure is up by six so that's actually quite significant let me see sorry not by six okay sorry because i had the chemistry style on it but it's it but it is still fives and fours from the shooting which is great um passing uh, being increased by a three and a two is pretty two if it was increased by a three or four would have been better because his long passing is pretty garbage uh but i think the card is pretty nice as well it looks awesome too man they recycled uve kits with brazil and uve you can't even see the uve logo you know, a little white outline maybe would look make it look banging, right? It looks sick, though. It looks really, really awesome. I do think they should have given, like, a white outline to the logo, though, because you can't see it. Um, what other cards do we have here? Uh, we have three more cards. We have Philippe Luige. Philippe Luige is not a card I would do personally. Philippe Luige actually used to have a card last year, I think, that was actually really, really solid. Um, so this card right here, obviously right off the bat, his acceleration, sprint speed, agility, and balance is really low, so it might not be worth it in that regard, but literally in everything else, he would be worth getting, right? He has a physical presence because he's six foot tall, 72 jumping is poor, but he is six foot tall, so obviously if I use the card personally, I'd probably use an anchor, because I don't think a shadow would help that much. I think an anchor would be more significant because his pace is already really low. Um, but it's not necessarily a card I would do myself because he is also high, medium, and work rate. So he doesn't really have that urgency to push back. Because you guys know how fullbacks are. When fullbacks push out of position, this game right now is so like people can wide pass past your full fullback area so much, even with players with medium high work rates. It's a really annoying mechanic uh, to make crossing more effective, which really sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, but Philippe Luis. With an anchor would be probably a little bit more usable, but again, not necessarily ideal. Uh, Virgil van Dijk is a pretty big upgrade here. Just trying to get to the cards here. Virgil van Dijk, so if we're going to make a, be making a comparison with his card, it's going to be in regards uh, to his 85. Didn't put the van part here. So UCL Live is this one right here. 74 pace, 88 defending, 88, 87 physical. So this is one of those cards where his, 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 like, he's so big in game that the poor acceleration sprint speed with agility and balance doesn't matter because his physical stature is huge, right? You could definitely notice that he's a very sluggish player and transitioning left and right with him is awful. It's 100% noticeable, right? But 
he really does make up for it in his defensive and physical stats. So when you're making the comparison between this Van Dyke and the old Van Dyke, which is the 85, you are looking at twos and threes for defensive and physical stats, and you are looking for you are looking at a two and a three for acceleration sprint speed, but only a one and a one for agility and balance. The agility and balance, if it was increased by like the fives and the sixes, then the card would be really worth getting. But 720k uh, is a little bit steep for is for is a little bit steep for a rating of a plus twos and threes when you get center backs in this game try your best to get players like rafael Varane because if you look at his card acceleration sprint speed already makes up for the lack of agility and balance but the, one of the best ones is sergio ramos because if you look at sergio ramos's card champions league card if you look at sergio ramos's card he has acceleration sprint speed with the agility the balance is six six Definitely noticeable, right? But when you have acceleration sprint speed with the agility, the transition with him is just going to be awesome, right? What are the best center backs to move in this game? Obviously, the icons are God tier, but those two center backs um, are really good. Not necessarily worth getting Van Dyke for 720k, but again, it's really based off of whether or not you want the color of the card. Hopefully, I don't miss out on anybody else here. I think right now, the Europa League cards might actually be more interesting to look at than the Champions League ones. Uh, there's a few Champions League ones that look good, but some of them just not necessarily ideal. James Rodriguez, UCL Live. So right off the bat as a cam, that is the only position you can use this card, that or center forward, because he doesn't have a weak foot in four star. Uh, he doesn't have defensive capabilities to stay in the center mid area, right? Uh, and he doesn't have this the acceleration and sprint speed to make up for the lack of defensive stats that he doesn't have. So when you do use James Rodriguez's card, you are strictly using him for the cam position or center forward position, especially with medium, medium work rates. He's all about dribbling on the ball, even though he's not great at it, right? He's okay at it because this, here's the thing, right? This acceleration, sprint speed, agility, and balance is really good if you're a center back or center mid, but as a, as a cam or a center forward, not necessarily ideal. This would be okay, okay as a center mid if these stats over here were better, but they're not, right? Physical stats, 71 strength, uh, 84, his passing stats in general are awesome. And he has 75 finishing with 89 composure. So that's obviously a bare minimum you need uh, for that to be really good. But that is going to conclude the review for the Champions League cards. I will definitely do a review for the Europa League cards as well, if you guys are definitely interested in that too. Uh, we're going to go ahead and review the Foot Miss cards for tomorrow. There's a Foot Miss Cazorla here. I'm not really sure if you guys want me to review that too. I'll probably do that in the Foot Miss review for tomorrow. So the, the video for tomorrow will be the Champions League cards first and then maybe Europa League afterwards with new Foot Miss cards. Because uh, Matthew and Kondogbia look really, really cool. So uh, we'll just take it from there. But that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. If you guys enjoyed the video, please drop a thumbs up on it. Definitely helps out the channel a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.